When you're first starting out and building your SaaS business, there's not a lot of data. However, once you start to generate some revenues, once you're starting to get together with your team or your co-founder and you're starting to say, hey, let's go scale the SaaS business, it can be really daunting with the amount of data you actually have. In fact, I've been in your shoes where we were scaling and I forgot how much data we had. I got so used to making decisions just with intuition because there was no data, I forgot to look at the actual data. Here's a big question though it can be really easy to get overwhelmed with all the data once you start to look at it. What data do you actually look at from your go-to-market machine to figure out how you can scale your SaaS business? How do you make sure that you're hitting the right benchmarks? In this episode, I'm gonna walk you through the three principles you absolutely need to know on how to actually diagnose your go-to-market machine, look at the right data, and scale your SaaS business effectively. And when you follow these three principles, you'll know exactly what you need to do and what area of your go-to-market machine to focus on so you can accelerate your growth to the next stage. Intro. What's up, buddy? Welcome to Unstoppable. I'm TK, and on this channel, I help SaaS founders like you grow your SaaS businesses faster with an unstoppable strategy. Now, if you are new to this channel, welcome. I drop an episode with actionable strategies and tactics from the trenches on how to grow your SaaS business faster. So if you are new to this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon. That way you'll get notified every single time I drop an episode with the TK energy. Now, if you're already part of this community, if you're part of my SaaS and go-to-market coaching programs, my people, welcome back. It's really awesome to see you over here. So I remember when I was operating my last SaaS business, Tauda, we pioneered the sales engagement space and then we sold it to Marketo. We were going through different inflection points of growth. And as soon as we were at that inflection part where we had some revenues and we were looking to get to that next stage, this happened when we were driving to a million and happened again when we were driving to 3 million, again when we were 6 million, we would get together and we would look at, hey, what do we need to do to actually accelerate our growth? And every single time I had to remind myself that, hey, there's actually not just an intuitive way to do this, but there's also a data-driven way to do this. And at the end, we found a way to actually do this where we both looked at our intuition and also looked at the data to make the best possible decision. Sure enough, we were able to get to a million ARR. Then that following year, we actually did 300% growth and got to 3 million ARR and the rest is history. And so what I wanna go through is going through that actual stage what are the three principles that I learned? What are the three principles that I apply now with every single SaaS founder that I work with as they're scaling their growth to actually get through this stage of the process? And when you follow these three principles, you too will be able to accelerate your growth to that next stage. So if you're excited to dig in to the first principle, go ahead and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and let's dig into principle number zero. There is principle number zero because I wanna lay the land out properly. Principle number zero is for every go-to-market strategy, there is essentially three components. And the three principles I'm gonna give you are tethered to this. And if you've been watching this channel for a while, then you already know these three components. The first one is your ideal customer profile. That's how you actually figure out what part of the market you're going after. The second one is your manifesto. This is your strategic message, your strategic narrative, your positioning, your messaging. And the third one is your Broadway show. And your Broadway show is the consistent set of sales and marketing activities that you run to actually attract the right people from your ideal customer profile, show them your manifesto so that they get into your sales and marketing process, whether it's product-led or sales-led, doesn't matter. And so these are essentially the three components that you have in every go-to-market strategy. If you already know about these three components, that means you've been part of this community for a while, you're part of my coaching program, so you know this very well. If you're new to this, don't worry, you can check out this video. It's our best performing video on the six steps to actually building out a go-to-market strategy and the key principles you need to know. You don't have to go right now. You can, I'll put it in the link below. You can watch it after this video and it'll go in depth into these three components. But notionally, what, all you need to know is these are the three components that go into a proper go-to market strategy. And needless to say, the three principles I'm gonna walk you through tie into a core metric, a core piece of GTM data that ties into these three components because everything connects together. So principle number zero is just know these are the three components to your go-to-market strategy. If you don't have all three of these, then chances are you don't quite have a go-to-market strategy. And so that's something you'll have to work on. If you already have them, you'll know exactly what part you need to fix or you need to focus on. So principle number zero is essentially just know the three components, right? That's zero. Now, principle number one is the first piece of data that you want to look at is your ICP. 
And the biggest piece of data that I've found to be eye-opening, I work with founders all the time when they're revamping their go-to-market strategy and we do an ICP exercise, everyone thinks they have an ideal customer profile until they go through my process. One of the pieces of data that we look at for companies that already have revenues, already have data, is their win percentage by segment. And this is the first piece of data that I found to be eye-opening every single time. I personally have gone through an inflection point in a SaaS business, and I've operated in SaaS business all the way from pre-revenue all the way up to 450 million ARR in revenue. And I found that if you actually look at your win rate by segment, whether it's SMB, mid-market, enterprise, or certain vertical, it becomes eye-opening on where are you winning and where are you losing. And that insight can help you reinforce what your ideal customer profile should be based on data. And so if you have some data, what I encourage you to do is look at win percentage by segment and actually start to do a proper ICP exercise based on that data so you can actually revamp your go-to-market strategy. And what I've found is when companies start to focus in more on specific ICPs, they're able to grow faster. I've seen this at a million, three million, 10 million, 40 million, 450 million, in all these companies that I've either been part of or coached, they've been able to grow faster because they used this metric to go through a proper ICP exercise and that actually unlocked growth for them because it focused on where they had their greatest strengths. Okay, so that's principle number one. Principle number two is having to do with your manifesto. When I work with founders around their manifesto, it's a core piece of centralized asset that we create that incorporates your strategic message, it incorporates your core messaging and your positioning. Once you have a manifesto, we then turn it into a lead magnet, we turn it into your sales deck if you're sales driven, or we turn it into an educational piece if you're product led. The biggest thing to understand on whether you have an effective lead magnet or you have an effective sales deck is to look at this one metric. And that one metric is your lead to opportunity percentage. So if you're generating 100 leads, then and 10 of them are becoming opportunities, then you have a lead to opportunity conversion of 10%. What that means is 10% of leads become opportunities. That actually happens to be a healthy benchmark. If you're below 10%, then chances are the way you are attracting the people from your ICP is bad, or it's not converting well, or it's not educating them properly, it's not creating that demand. Or it could be that the ICP you're targeting is just not the right fit for your product or your message. What this does is looking at this metric opens up the conversation on is our ICP right? And are we educating them in the right way? Are we messaging to them the right way? Are we positioning ourselves the right way? Because if we are, then a lot of them will turn into real opportunities. If we aren't, then they'll just look at the manifesto or the lead magnet and say, hey, this is not for me, I'm gonna move on. Or even they might not even get into the manifesto, they might not be clicking on your ads or responding to your cold emails where you can also use the manifesto messaging. And so what I found over and over is looking at this metric of lead to opportunity conversion gives you a really great benchmark on, hey, is our messaging actually resonating? Once someone comes in, they've gone through all these steps to maybe click on an ad or click on a LinkedIn post, an organic post, and then they say, hey, yeah, I want this lead magnet, and then they get in and they're like, no, I'm not interested. And so it gives you a really good view into whether your messaging is working or being effective or not. Just between these two things, you can start to understand what part of your go-to-market strategy is working versus not working, how you can improve it so you can scale faster. And the biggest thing to know is there are real benchmarks around this. So your win rate should be around 20%. It's classic Pareto's principle, right? 20% uh, of whatever you've got is gonna be of value. And so out of your opportunity in your pipeline, benchmark is about 20%. If you have a 20% win rate, you're doing pretty well. If you go above 20%, then you're doing really well. And same thing with lead to opportunity, this one is actually 10%, meaning if 10% of your leads are turning into real quality opportunities, and then you're winning 20% of them, then you have a really great go-to-market funnel. And what you can do is now start to scale that in meaningful ways. You can put more money into that because you know it's converting in the right way. Now, there's a third metric that I wanna go into, and I wanna show you the benchmark for it, but before I do that, before I go to principle number three, let me just pause here for a second. Are you starting to see the power in this? Are you starting to see the power of instead of getting overwhelmed with all of the data and all of the metrics that can exist, or just continuing to do intuition-based decisions, which worked in the early stages but doesn't work when you're scaling, I've learned this the hard way. Instead of that, if you can just start to think about, okay, here are my three components of my go-to-market strategy, my ICP. 
who are we going after? What's the market? What's my manifesto? What's my messaging that I'm gonna go to attract these people? And what's my Broadway show? How am I gonna consistently bring my manifesto to my ICP? If you start to do that, and then you start to look at these two, just these two metrics, you can start to have some constructive discussions about how do we scale our go-to-market machine. If you start to see the power on this, can I just get a yes in the comments below? And also smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really likes it when you do that. Also, if you're in this stage where you're like, you know what? I need a proper go-to-market strategy. I need to revamp my go-to-market strategy. I don't think my ICP is right. We kind of winged it. We don't quite have the right messaging. It's not quite resonating. I bet I'm not hitting these benchmarks. Then I encourage you to check out my SaaS go-to-market coaching program. This is where we work together to actually revamp your go-to-market strategy and accelerate your growth. You don't have to go anywhere right now. I'll link to it below. I'll tell you more about it at the end of this video. But right now, let's go to principle number three and metric number three that's gonna help you scale. Also, if you haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button. My team loves it when you do that. YouTube loves it when you do that. I love it when you do that. We all love it and it just means a lot to us. All right, so principle number three. Principle number three, now, with the Broadway show, just to kind of reiterate this, the Broadway show is a consistent set of sales and marketing activities that you're running to actually bring your manifesto, your message, to your ICP. And this could be on LinkedIn, this could be on Twitter, this could be on Facebook ads, this could be on Google, this could be, it, there's so many different channels, right? But it's a consistent set of activities. And you're doing it in a consistent way. That's why we call it a Broadway show. What you don't wanna be doing is a scatterbrained set of like, oh, we're gonna do this this week, and I hear TikTok is great, and I hear we should do a webinar, and you're just all over the place. There's nothing consistent, so nothing compounds, and you don't iterate. This is the idea of building one master Broadway show that you run every single week, and it gets better and better to bring your manifesto to your ICP. The metric that I like to look at to really understand if this is working or you need to revamp something or how you can scale it is your pipeline coverage, right? And this is something that often gets forgotten. Uh, every single founder that I talk to, every single leadership team that I work with, they all have goals. They're like, look, we wanna actually do 10 million of new business this year, or we wanna do a million this year, a million of net new revenue that we wanna do this year. And what founders and teams often forget is the math behind, well, you need to generate a certain number of leads, a certain percentage of those leads will become opportunities and you're gonna win a certain percentage of those opportunities. And in order to close, in order to win a million dollars of opportunities, you need to generate that much more in terms of pipeline, in terms of opportunities. You need to generate a lot more opportunities and dollar value than you're actually planning on closing because you're only gonna close 20%. Out of the 20% of opportunities that you win, only a certain percentage of leads become opportunities, only 10%. So that means that you need to create a lot more leads. That's gonna create a lot more opportunities. Out of that, you're gonna close 20% of that. Are you starting to get this? And so these two connect. The idea of that and embracing that is called pipeline coverage. And generally speaking, the benchmark for this is 3X to 5X. 3X to 5, what does that mean? It means that if you are planning on closing, this is broad rule of thumb that every VP of sales, VP of marketing will follow, and founders need to learn it too. I learned this the hard way, baby TK. If you're looking to close a million dollars of net new business, that means you need three to five million dollars of pipeline, depending on how healthy your win rates are and how healthy your funnel is. And so if you're like below benchmark on lead to opportunity, meaning let's just say 1% of your leads turn into opportunities, then you wanna to err towards 5X because you need a lot more leads. If your win rate is suffering or it's a competitive dynamic and you haven't figured out your manifesto yet, or you're all over the place in your ICP and the win rates are all over the place, then you need to go towards 5X. If these are pretty healthy, you're hitting benchmark, then you can go towards 3X, you can be a little bit more conservative. But the idea is knowing your pipeline coverage, meaning if you need to generate a million dollars of new revenue for whatever period of time you're looking at, you need $3 million of opportunities. If you need to generate $3 million of opportunities, then you have to divide that by basically 10% to get to how many leads you need based on your average deal size. This is where marketing math comes in really handy. And when I work with founders, I always give them a little spreadsheet to say, cool, let's actually map out what your target is and let's map out what your metrics are. And so that way we know exactly how much we need to generate. And this number, is always eye-opening because it tells you, look, whatever you're doing, you probably need to 10X that in terms of activities and make sure that you're amping up on the amount of eyeballs and traffic you're getting in front of because you have to hit a very high pipeline coverage number in order to hit your revenue goals. A lot of times people don't look at this data and don't do the math and they're like, we didn't quite grow. It's like you didn't even stand a chance because your benchmarks were off and the traffic level wasn't high enough. And this kind of opens the eyes to exactly what matters. Now, to recap, 
Here are the three principles that you need to follow to use data to revamp your go-to-market strategy and to scale. Principle number zero is you need to make sure you have a proper go-to-market strategy. You need to have an ideal customer profile, not just wing it, a proper one. You need to have a manifesto. That's your strategic narrative, your messaging, which will turn into your lead magnet, your sales deck, your educational content, your product-led. And also you need to have a Broadway show where you're consistently bringing your manifesto to your ICP. So that's principle number zero. You need a proper go-to-market strategy. Once you have that, then you actually need to look at your data. What you need to look at is what's my win rate by win percentage by segment. You need to make sure you're hitting a benchmark of 20% and choose the segments where you're doing really well and revamp your ICP. Number two, you need to make sure you're converting your leads to real opportunities. Benchmark is 10% for that. And number three, you need to make sure you're doing enough in your Broadway show so you're able to hit a pipeline coverage of 3x to 5x, which is your target number. You do these three things, you look at these data, it'll give you an actual plan to say, cool, what do we need to do? Which area do we need to focus on? Maybe it's all three, maybe it's one of them, maybe you're hitting benchmark on some or not, or maybe it's all messed up and you just need to revamp your go-to-market strategy. You'll know based on looking at these three numbers, you'll be able to have a constructive conversation and say, cool, what do we need to do to grow based on this data? It'll open your eyes, it'll make this a lot more manageable on how to scale your SaaS business. Now you know exactly the data to look at and the principles to follow to actually revamp your go-to-market strategy. What you may not know is, hey, how do I calculate each of this data? How do I know I'm making the right decisions? How do I feed this into a proper ideal customer profile, a proper manifesto, a proper Broadway show? This is why I run my SaaS go-to-market coaching program. Inside of my SaaS go-to-market coaching program, I walk you through how to build a proper ideal customer profile. I walk you through how to actually build a manifesto. And then I walk you through how to run a Broadway show consistently so you can bring your manifesto to your ICP. I also walk you through exactly what data to capture and how to iterate on it and how to diagnose it so you can scale more effectively. It's an incredible program. I've worked with so many amazing SaaS companies. We've shared so many case studies. We've had so many success stories. We actually switched to two episodes a week where every Thursday we're launching in your case study right now. So it's been incredible. If you are at the stage where you need to revamp your go-to-market strategy and like to work together to actually scale your SaaS business, just go to tkcater.com slash GTM. tkcater.com slash GTM. And inside of there, you'll see all the details on my program. You'll fill out a little form so we can actually get on a call and figure out if we're the right fit. And if we are, we're off to the races. Generally, within three weeks of joining, you're able to launch your revamp go-to-market strategy. And then we work together to scale from there. It's an incredible program. So just go to tkkater.com slash GTM. If you got value from this video, please smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really loves it when you do that. And so do we, we put a lot of love into these videos. If you have a fellow founder, if you have a fellow team member, if you have a fellow SaaS leader that would get value from this, please share this with them. It just means the world to us. If you're part of a Slack group, a WhatsApp group, please share this video as well. We put out these videos completely for free to help as many SaaS companies and teams as possible. And also lastly, remember, everyone needs a strategy for their life and their business. When you are with us, yours is gonna be unstoppable. I'm TK and I'll see you inside the go-to-market program, hopefully, or at least the next episode. Take care, everybody. In this episode, ooh, how did I screw that up?